bottom line is that we are in a contest of ideas against an ideology of hate, and we have to win. Let's be clear, though. Islam is not our adversary. Muslims are peaceful and tolerant people and have nothing whatsoever to do with terrorism. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we addressed earlier with Governor Gilmore, I don't know what the heck she's talking about, but maybe our panel does. Uh, joining us on uh, the Molesburg panel on this Friday, Larry Elder, radio host of the Larry Elder Show, and David Goodfriend. Uh, of course, he is a government affairs democratic a political strategist and former aide to President Bill Clinton. All right, uh, why don't we start with David? Uh, get, get a little defense of uh, Muslims have <laughs> nothing to do with terrorism. Really? Yeah, I think it was George W. Bush as president who said emphatically uh, that Islam, I think his words were, uh, is a peaceful religion. A, a billion, over a billion people worldwide, he said get peace from it. Our war is not with Islam. Our war is with people who would uh, do harm to innocents. That's George W. Bush, circa uh, 2003. And I think his words then were right. And I think his words t today still fit. I don't think Hillary Clinton is breaking any new ground. Of course, she being a Democrat led uh, Republican attacks uh, to come her way. But in the, if you look at the substance of her statement and the substance of George W. Bush's statement during the Iraq war, during the a war on terror that he prosecuted, there's really no daylight between them. All right, well, uh, I, you know, Larry, I disagree vehemently. I think it's a whole nother ball game when you say Muslims have nothing to do with terrorism. That's not Islam as a peaceful religion. And I think, uh, you know, George W. Bush, we've seen a lot of you know what go down from radical right. Islamists since George Bush made that statement that now they're, the, the Democrats are even making commercials and using. Bush, their hero, all of a sudden, from that old statement. I think we live in a different world than we li lived in 2003, and now we have uh, radical Islamists cutting off Christians' heads and putting them on sticks. Well, the first part of her statement, though, was we're not at war with Islam. Who said we were? Uh, she puts up this straw man, and then she knocks it down to imply that Republicans or others uh, believe that we're at war with Islam. We are not. But this is the same woman, though, who says those who want to defund Planned Parenthood are like terrorists. The same woman who says those who support the NRA are like communists and Iranians. So in terms of inflammatory rhetoric, uh, I would ask that she look in the mirror. Yeah, what is it, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, David, about Obama? Uh, who gets passionate when he's uh, trashing Republicans overseas, uh, but doesn't get passionate when he talks about terror attacks and dead people. Um, I, I still haven't heard anything from the State Department or the White House about the dead Jewish American teenager in Israel yesterday. I haven't heard anything about the terrorist attack in Israel yesterday. But in, in general, what is it that makes them so passionate when they, uh, and use it incendiary language when they talk about Republicans, but when they talk about Islamic terror, they can't even say Islamic terror? Well, let's talk about the passion point. I actually, I have actually expressed this view to the White House myself, and I think a lot of other people have too. It is a criticism of mine to this uh, president that he is not more vehement and impassioned in his comments about terrorist attacks. I think that's a valid, valid criticism of this pres president. But I also, I want you to hearken back, as I've tried to do over and over again, to other times in history when we've been faced by this kind of threat and if you think about the Nazis bombing London during World War II and how Churchill responded to that and how the British responded to those attacks, which were designed to inflict terror, they kept that British stiff upper lip. They said, keep calm and carry on. And they said, if we let them instill terror in us, they win. Just this morning, I want you to know this. I want your audience to know this. Just this morning, I rode the, the subway here in Washington, D.C. with my son. And I said to him, we are not going to let them scare us. We are not going to let them change what we do. And I just wish in this political environment where we've got a presidential campaign heating up, we all know how that works. I wish more people in public positions, including candidates for public office, would view their role as being straight and being calm with the American people okay, and David, not trying to spin up 
emotion. David, Larry, go David ahead. By, 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 the, by the same token, let's be honest. Look at the polls. Young French Muslims, a large number of them support homicide bombers. A large number of young British Muslims support homicide bombers and think at sometimes these things are okay. Let's not ignore the fact that there is a real problem with radical Islam. And when you have the president of Egypt saying there needs to be a religious uh, revolution, I think you have to look at that. There's something fundamentally wrong here. And by the way, no if you question. want to wait, if you want to go back to World War II, and if you want to go back to the Nazis and how yeah. uh, the, the leaders of fighting for freedom spoke, they acted. They bombed Germany, including German cities. We now have a president. We now have a president who sends bo our bombers out on bombing raids to get ISIS, and most of them come back without the, dropping their ordinance because we might kill a civilian. Uh, there's a big, huge, big fat difference between Obama and, and the people you're talking about. So don't put them in the same breath. Well, let's talk about Donald Trump and the Republicans in Congress who are trying to stir up fear for political reasons to scare American people rather than doing their fear. public job. I think there's reason well, for fear. Yes, but you know, here's something I think. I, I had a, a very high security clearance when I worked in the White House, and I know for a fact today that the Republican members of Congress who are running for president, and I'm talking about Senator Ted Cruz and Senator Marco Rubio and the other public officials, they get briefings and they get facts and then they absolutely make public statements in derogation of what they've just learned. They're you lies. You're still I getting security. Wait, 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 wait. You're still getting I'll tell you how I know. Briefings? I'll tell you exactly. Yeah. No, no. I'll tell you exactly how I know. Because other members of Congress have publicly said so. Those other members of Congress who get the same briefings have said, wait a minute. Those guys are not saying what we just learned in our briefing. Right, right, that right, is, right, right, you know right, what I call that? I call that treason. All right. Well, that okay, okay, treason. okay. Hold it. Hold it. We're coming back, and you're going to tell me. Um, you're going to tell me where, where they've said what they've said that is not true, and then we'll take then Larry will weigh in. We're coming back with the panel, folks. This should be good. Don't go away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, when we last left the Molesburg panel of Larry Elder and David Goodfriend, David had accused um, I, Ted Cruz, I remember maybe uh, uh, Marco Rubio, he said uh, Republicans running in the Senate, of taking in, uh, briefing information that they get on a, a, a terrorist situation, uh, the situation with ISIS, then making public statements to the contrary of what they were told. And David said he knows this because other members of Congress have told you this or they've said this in public? No, they've said it publicly. So I'll, let's, let's, uh, let's cut right to the quick. Republican Senator Bob Corker, chairman. He's, wait, wait, wait. wait. The, First of all, you said running for president. He's not running for president. Now you no, understand. No, I, no, no. I'm talking about Rubio and Cruz. So here's how I know they're getting better information than what they're telling the public, okay? Senator Bob Corker, Republican of Tennessee, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, has said publicly, after receiving briefings from the administration, the real problem here is not the refugee review process. It is the visa waiver process. That's an that opinion, someone with David. A friend's That's an opinion. Excuse me. Just That's an excuse opinion. Me. Well, he said it was after he reviewed the data. Right, after but that is an opinion. That's his interpretation. So, uh, so, here's, so here's the lie. The lie. There's no lie. That is, the lie that is being told to the American people by Republicans running for oh, president right, is that the when, problem, when done, the threat, me... is from refugees coming from Syria. It's a lie. That is a it's threat. A as lie. Is, Larry, that is a threat, as is the visa program. Absolutely, and those are opinions. Those, those are not, uh, those are not uh, discrepancies of fact. Let me give you a discrepancy of fact. I remember after 9-11, uh, the Democrats that are involved in the Intelligence and Defense Committees were thoroughly briefed on so-called enhanced interrogation techniques, including waterboarding. And they, and they loved became it. Public. They loved the, it. The, the, the fit hit the shan. They had no problem with it. All of a sudden, we were unaware of it. We were unaware of it. Now, is that a lie, David? Sure. If they were aware of it and they said they weren't, then they're liars, too. Okay. All right. Well, I don't. I fair don't enough. equate the two the two situations. But okay, fair enough. At least you're consistent. <laughs> all, right, all right. So let, let's. Yeah, talk, I mean, I, I mean right. look. The point is. The point is. Shouldn't we as Americans want to beat this enemy? The way we beat them is with facts and rational thought and being better than them. Right. And but I just gave opinion, opinion tired of these you, politicians you, you, lying to the American people and scaring them in order to win points in some stupid election. Yeah, it's but crazy. you gave an opinion of what Corker said, and you and you accused Rubio. No, no, and I trust him. Oh, That's not Sorry. fair. I trust, I trust Bob Corker, the Republican of Tennessee, chairman of the Senate That's Foreign Relations opinion. Committee. And what Bob, he said, David, it's his it, opinion. What, it is, what he said, he can't 
he can't tell the public classified information, okay? He can only tell the public, I have been briefed, I have received information. David, 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 let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. There's no doubt that the the, the visa program has not been talked about nearly enough, and that is a huge problem. No doubt about that. But can can, can Senator Corker, did he receive information, or do you have information that Syrian refugees, who we don't even know who, who they are yet, it's not like I could say this Syrian refugee or that one, will not come into this country and do us harm? Can you Here's say what, that? Can you say I, that? You, okay, so let me take apart your question. Do I have information? I have public information, right. such as the following. Since 2011, when the United Nations... Hu, um, no, no, you're not answering the question. Refugees. You're not can answering I, can the I say question. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to answer your question. ISIS you're didn't me. exist so, then, David. ISIS didn't I, I, exist I understand. Then. So here's how, here's how I think Senator Corker arrives at his conclusion. He okay, didn't arrive got at a conclusion. He, he, he said one is maybe worse than the other. I'd like to hear Senator Corker say that, that, he, that there's no problem with Syrian refugees David, whatsoever. David, you're really taking a long time to get to your point. Let me just yeah, say something ahead, real quickly, Larry. if I can. The National Intelligence Director, James Clapper, said he was concerned about the vetting process. Jay Johnson, the, uh, the, the Homeland Security Secretary, said the same thing. James Comey said the same thing. These are three top people involved in the defense of this country, all expressing skepticism about the, the thoroughness of our vetting procedure. Now, are they, are they out to lunch? Are they off the reservation? Too? David? I think what Jay Johnson said was there is no such thing. And this was in response to the House vote to somehow pause all refugee review. I think Jay Johnson's point was, and it's a valid one, you're never ever in any kind of review process guaranteed 100% accuracy, guaranteed 100% results. You don't get 100% right, on, let me give you on this, anything. Let me give you this His point, I think, was if you're if you're trying to tell people that the threat to their security comes from refugees, you're missing all right, the all right, point. David, David, let me give you this point. David, 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 let me give you this point. Investors Business Daily. Who picks the Syrian refugees that resettle in the U.S.? Homeland Security? No. The United Nations, in concert with the global Islamist group, and they're and they're sending more than fifteen thousand, not the widely reported ten thousand. And this Muslim group reportedly has ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. How come President Obama hasn't told us this? The United Nations High Command for Refugees referred and refers thousands of refugees, mostly women and children, to the United States for a review process that takes two years. All right, I'm done. I'm out of time. Larry, final word. Larry, final word. Larry, final word. James James Comey said you can invent till the cows come home. If they're not in a database, we won't know who they are. I didn't say it. He did. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Great debate. I appreciate it. Larry Elder and David Goodfriend. And, uh, this uh, topic is far, far from over. You could bet about that. Um, bet on that. Not bet about it. Bet about it, but bet on it. All right, we're coming back with um, Congressman Marsha Blackburn. Don't go away.